this stage in the Mirai setup, you have equipped your robot's wrist with a camera mount, a camera, a lens, a ring light, a force torque sensor, and an end effector. Let's continue with the setup. Here on the table, we have the Mirai controller, a tablet with the Mirai training app on it, a controller for the force torque sensor, and an Ethernet switch. Now, we have to make it possible for all these components to communicate. To this end, we cable them together. After cabling, it will be necessary to connect them in a network. This is called network configuration. We cover this in a separate tutorial. For now, let's concentrate on the cables. Note that for this demonstration, we're using a UR5E robot, an on-robot force torque sensor, and a custom gripper. In your setup, you can use other robot models, sensors, and end effectors. Let's start by plugging in the mirror controller. The power supply cable for the mirror controller goes from the wall into the power supply inlet on the controller. Now, we screw the antennas into the mirror controller. We have to plug in the USB cable for the camera. It goes into the USB 3 port on the back of the mirror controller. Attached to the camera lens is a ring light. Using this extension, we connect the ring light to the native robot controller, which in our setup is under the table. There should be a digital output terminal on the native robot controller. That's where the ring light cable goes. Now we can turn to the force torque sensor. When you cable your force torque sensor, be sure that no forces can be transferred from the robot's movement to this part of the cable. The cable from the sensor goes into the force torque sensor controller, which we have here on the table. Let's connect that. The force torque sensor controller has a power cable that goes here. Next, let's build the Ethernet setup. To do this, we bring in the Ethernet switch. This is what we use to put all these components together in a single network. We connect the mirror controller's robot LAN port to the Ethernet switch. Then we connect the robot controller to the Ethernet switch. Then we connect the force torque sensor control box to the Ethernet switch. There's one cable left to be plugged in, an Ethernet cable that provides internet. This goes into the Mirai controller's WAN port. Since the IP address of this port should be set through a DHCP, make sure the connected network provides a DHCP service. The Mirai controller is the only component that will have access to the internet. The robot, the tablet, and the control boxes won't have access. You can unplug this once you're ready to put your Mirai-equipped robot into production. Mirai doesn't require an internet connection during execution. And that should do it. We've connected all the hardware components for your Mirai setup. We also cleaned up our workspace and organized the cables, making sure that no forces can be transferred from the robot's movements to the sensor. The next step is to connect the components in a network. We go over this in a separate video about network configuration. For now, thanks for your time.